eight so far. Peter Knopp. Will the fairy tale continue to its ultimate climax? Peter Knopp from Frankfurt in Germany, 32 years of age. The top player after the match play competition. He's been bowling for 13 years. And before coming to Australia, he bowled six perfect 300 games. He made that seven with an astounding performance earlier on today to uh, get himself a uh, marine power speedboat. But the ultimate prize for him, $25,000 if he can beat Robert Thompson in this first game of a possible two final. Should Thompson beat him, then Knopp can challenge for the right to win this Australian 10-pin cup. Down on one knee, his opening bowl is only a nine count. So both players have spares to uh, complete the first frame. Thompson does it. Peter Knopp from Germany has been a sensation here this week, Peter. He's really shown a lot of Australian bowlers that uh, difficult conditions can be overcome with power and accuracy. So even Stevens in the early going. Knopp has the chance of uh, taking two bites at the cherry because of uh, the fact he got into the stepladder phase as the top qualifier. But I'm sure he'd want to finish it in one and stop this man's Amazing performance up the rankings. Looking for a strike. Second frame and he's given himself a tough, tough split. Very difficult spare here for Thompson. Very studious looking knob. Student of the art of 10-pin bowling. See what Thompson can do with this difficult spare. Only one. Should he have cut his losses there and just tried to pick up two or? At this early stage it's difficult. It's up to the player really. Uh, Knopp is a, uh, has proved his dominance here this week. So I think Thompson really had to go for everything he could. Knopp's a part-time player on the professional bowlers tour in the US. In fact, when he leaves here at tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, he goes straight to Tucson to pick up the US professional tour. Baby in the big crowd here at Fleming Lanes. <laughs> Not happy with the action, but uh, the players totally focused. Not even hearing it, and a strike for Robert Thompson. After what appeared to be just a lot of concentration for a short time in that second frame, Thompson's come back with a great strike and an easy spare here for Knopf. Both bowlers in the third frame marking a strike to Thompson and a spare to Knopp. And Knopp leads by 17. But Thompson has the opportunity to make a double to reduce that lead. And he now seems to be having some trouble on that odd lane. The ball reacting very quickly diving into the head pin. Two bad leaves for him. Oh, he's going for the jugular now, Peter Knopp. 12 pins better average coming into this final than this player. And it's starting to show a brave try for that spare on the 10 pin from Thompson. Luck perhaps has run out for him. Still a long way to go. Into the fifth frame. Knopp leads by 29. The strike here and he'll take that lead to 39. Yeah. 
Looks great. Thompson here needing a strike to stay with him, and then gets it. Still hanging in there. An intimidating bowler, Peter Knopp. He's powerful, and uh, certainly he uh, throws himself around on the approach. A spectacular player to watch, and the Australian crowd here has been uh, absolutely in awe of his ball reaction and the scores he's been achieving this week at Ed Fleming Lanes. Life athletic and as you say intimidating he narrows those eyes as he looks down the lane and almost dares the pins to uh, stay up Thompson looking to answer the challenge consecutive no the 10 pin he looked good and although 10 pin bowling is a funny game and as we've already seen in a couple of our matches earlier Peter particularly Thompson's first match against Bradford, how things turn around within 10 frames. But 49-pin uh, lead to Peter Knopp at this stage, and Robert Thompson needs to convert this spare and then get working on some strikes and hope that somewhere Knopp lets him into the match. The feature of the bowling bowlers that have made it through to these finals, uh, the fact they wear eyeglasses. Is this, is this a trend that you've noticed, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, the, the bowling fraternity really needs to, particularly at this level, to make sure they're focused, not only mentally, but uh, from a vision perspective as well. What are they looking at here? They've got a number of markings on the lane. Sure, they'd be, Peter Knopper would be looking at the arrow <laughs> after he gets a strike. <laughs> Four in a row from Knopp. And he's looking and hit somewhere around the first four or five boards on the lane. There's an arrow down the lane on the fifth board and just beyond that is where Knopp would be looking. Just a high delivery from Thompson. It's slipping away from him. The ball, re the ball reaction by both bowlers is fairly obvious. Indeed, Thompson plays very much straight up and down the lane, the ball hooking at the end marginally or slightly Peter Knopp throws the ball across the lane from out and the ball comes back very quickly in the last 15 feet that's the sort of powerful shot you need to win on the United States tour and even with that spare the best Robert Thompson can do in our seventh frame moving on is a 198 game and Peter Knopp is running at a 240 game pace at this time One of the best bowlers we've seen in this country for many years. We've seen a number of great Americans, Dave Davis, Barry Asher, Steve Neff, Glenn Allison. Well, I'm sure that Thompson's learning there. something I'm from sure. him, as it are all the bowlers here at Moral Bark. He's, uh, well, set a standard that uh, few will be able to match, of course, but you've got to set your sights high. Knopp going for six strikes in a row. Gee, it's immense power. And a 10. Pin. Just leaves the 10. He, he might have overstretched a little bit there on that one. He gave it a heck of a lot. Well, I have to say that that's one of the few things that's uh, one of the only things this week that's cost not, not having a, a bigger average than the one that he already has, 219 for the entire tournament, are uh, single pins after hitting the pocket. Well, pressure off a little bit, and uh, it's suiting Robert Thompson. Sure, uh, Knopp leads by 61, and uh, the best, uh, as I said, Thompson can do is 198. And a good spare to Peter Knopp. Eleven years, Thompson senior is Knopp, and he's just 
trying to keep him up. As I said, sportsmanship here this weekend has been a feature. Well, the lucky breaks he was getting earlier on have deserted him. And perhaps he had his share. It's been a spectacular performance it to has. come from fifth through. I mean, young man, no television uh, experience before. Uh, everything was new to him here in this standard of a tournament. He's done remarkably well. And not picks on getting the breaks. Well, the power helping him there. The carrier, the pins and the action. Just knocking down that five that was hanging about. To Thompson. Looking dejected, but he shouldn't. He should be very pleased with his performance. Uh, I'm not sure of how many sports people can play for five years and reach a calibre of this level. Thompson's achieved that. He's certainly a natural if there is such a thing in sport and a natural to this game. Not now in his 10th frame. Best he can do is 249. Let's see what he gets here. And it's a nice place to leave it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if he could uh, pick that up for us though? It'd be a nice way to finish the tournament. A terrific spare for a 239 game. And Robert Thompson finishes with a 176 game. Well, the crowd have been with him the whole way, and there he's provided some fantastic entertainment. But this man's the winner. Oh. <laughs> he just goes through the middle. Well, the icing perhaps not on their cake as he would have liked, but he's looked the winner here really all weekend. Yes, he has, Peter, a sensational performance. He's averaged 219 for the whole tournament, and. Uh, he came along here with five other Germans. Brenton Barrett from Brunswick there, congratulating Peter Knopf and a spectacular performance by the German. $25,000 for Peter Knopf. His teammates, I think, might end up sharing in some of that. And a $15,000 boat. What a worthwhile visit to Australia it's been for the German. Peter, congratulations. You put on a tremendous display for us over the weekend. You must be wondering why you hadn't come to Australia before this. Yeah, they hadn't had this international tournament before and we got invited through uh, Warren Stewart, one of the tournament committees. And I met him in Chicago and he passed the flyer around of the World Cup or the World Series tournament. And so we decided to come over to try give him a shot and it turned out very good for us Germans. Did you know much about Australian bowling before that? No, not really. I met uh, Robert Sigman in, uh, in Kent, in Malaysia, where I bowled the tournament two years ago. And before that, just out of American Bowlers Journal, they have an international division in their newspaper. So I get some reading on that. Well, you averaged 224-odd coming into this uh, final five. Is that just about as well as you can bowl? Uh, I did better in some of the tournaments than I did a lot worse in other tournaments, so this is, when you give always 100%, then you get what you, what you have to get, and so um, it turned out very good for me, and it's over my usual average, but like I said, I, I won tournaments with higher average, but I won tournaments with very low average as well, so it's, it's kind, uh, the surrounding will give the scoring, so you have mm. to take what it, what it takes. Well, coming into the, the final against Robert, who was on a roll, having played so well, uh, did you think you could stop him? Yeah, I thought about that, and uh, I made two TV shows back home in the European uh, cable network, and I averaged 245 in a, over four or, six, four, four or five games on, on international TV, so I know I can get hot when I'm on TV, and the pressure was definitely on him because I was the tournament leader, and I get a second chance so I can free freewheeling and he, he still have to beat me twice to get the title. So this helped a lot. Are we going to see you back next year to defend the title? Yeah, sure. I, this is a part of the tournament, so if you're defending titles, you get an invitation for the next year, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing you very much. Peter Knopf, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Okay. Robert? Robert, that was uh, something to remember. Even though you didn't uh, win the final, uh, the show you put on for us, uh, winning those uh, three games prior to it, uh, did you come into the, the step ladder feeling you had nothing to lose, so you just went for it? Uh, yeah, I certainly did because I was starting to struggle a bit towards the end of match play and um, my confidence was starting to go a bit down. But the lower numbers in the house were harder than the higher numbers, so I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose when I come back up to the higher numbers. And um, You mean the lanes when you say that? Yes, that yeah. Um, the higher numbers are the lanes, like the three and four end was really tough, and like the higher numbers from 19 through to 28 were very, very easy. And so it, um, it made me feel like I had a good chance to, to make it to the top. 
What about that first game against Ian Bradford? He too had really hit his straps coming into the uh, final five. I think uh, the winner were changed about four times in the space of those ten frames. Yeah, it certainly did. Um, I made some really silly errors in the first game, but um, I was just thankful that Ian missed that uh, seven pin in the tenth frame to, to give me a chance to win, and I took full advantage. Did you feel, even though Peter had played so well, that the way you were playing you could beat him in the final? Well, I had a feeling that if he wasn't on his game you know, at the time that I had a chance, but uh, he just bowled so well all weekend and he was just going to be very, very hard to beat. Well, you've only been bowling for five years. What have you learnt uh, here at the Australian Ten Pin Cup? Uh, I've learnt so much. Uh, the overseas bowlers are just uh, so much more advanced than the Australians and um, I suppose the more time we get to play against them, um, the better it will be. OK, we look forward to seeing you perhaps go one better next year. Well played over the weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. I'd just like to say um, thanks to my coach back home, Peter Zambulis, for getting me to this point in my bowling career. Thank you. Good on you. Well done, Robert Thompson. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Good on you. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the action from Moral Bark. Next week, ABC Sport runs Australia. On Saturday in Grandstand, it's the Gold Coast Marathon, and then on Sunday, live around Australia from 10 o'clock, the 1992 Sun Herald City to Surf. Hope you can join us then. Peter G, ABC Grandstand. Tonight, we look at the influential world of sports sponsors and entrepreneurs. Can we really be sold on sport? Find out in More Than A Game, coming up next on ABC. Yeah.